The universe is really huge, but how huge are we talking about? Before we get into that, let's touch on the different structures in the universe. The universe exhibits a wide range of organized structures on different scales. From small structures like the Earth and our solar system to galaxies containing millions of stars. And finally, enormous structures that contain billions of galaxies. How these organized structures formed and how they impact one another is a crucial focus of modern astrophysics. The large-scale structure of the universe refers to the different patterns of galaxies and matter on scales much more prominent than individual galaxies. These interrelated structures are very massive and could be up to billions of light years in length. Gravity plays a role in shaping them and holding them together. Just as gravity on smaller scale structures pulls together gas particles to form stars and pulls together stars to form galaxies, it also does the same on larger scale structures. It pulls together galaxies and matter into patterns on larger scales to form galaxy groups, galaxy clusters, superclusters, sheets, walls, and filaments, which are separated by enormous voids, creating a massive foam-like structure known as the cosmic web. Before 1989, it was believed that galaxy clusters that had a dynamic equilibrium were the most prominent structures in existence and that they were distributed more or less uniformly throughout the universe in every direction. However, since the early 1980s, more and more massive structures have been discovered. In 1983, Adrian Webster identified the Webster LQG, a large quasar group consisting of five quasars. A quasar is an astronomical object of very high luminosity found in the centers of some galaxies and powered by gas spiraling at high velocity into a vast black hole. This discovery was the first identification of a large-scale structure and has expanded the information about the known grouping of matter in the universe. Currently, the largest structure in the universe is Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, which was discovered in November 2013. It is approximately 10 billion light years long, 7.2 billion light years wide, and almost 1 billion light years thick. Groups of galaxies are not randomly distributed throughout the universe, but are grouped into gravitationally bound clusters. These clusters are described as rich or poor depending on how many galaxies they contain. Poor clusters are called groups, and our Milky Way is part of a poor cluster called the local group. The local group comprises more than 50 galaxies, including the dwarf galaxies. Rich clusters contain over a thousand galaxies, and an example is the Coma Cluster that has about 10,000 galaxies. The clusters are then grouped into superclusters, consisting of around a dozen clusters, each with a mass of about 10 trillion to 100 trillion solar masses. Superclusters are the largest known systems of galaxies. The largest superclusters can spread over several million light years of space. That is how massive the superclusters are. There are two large-scale clusters of particular importance in the massive universe. That is the Great Wall and the Great Attractor. These two structures influence how the galaxies and the local group move and are ultimately responsible for the fate of the Milky Way. Astronomers predict that the local group will eventually merge with the Virgo Cluster, which will itself merge with the Centaurus and Shapley superclusters that make up the Great Attractor. From studying the large-scale structure of the universe, astronomers learn about the strength of gravity in the universe. Astronomers can measure galaxies at different distances away from the Earth, which corresponds to different times in the universe's history due to the time their radiation takes to reach us. From that, we can tell that gravity is attracting more and more matter together over time, thus the formation of more and more clusters in the universe. Gravity shapes all the structures in the universe apart from the quantum level. This explains why celestial bodies are spherical in shape. It is clear that dark matter dominates in the matter budget of the universe. 
Thus, the properties of dark matter particles determine the formation and evolution of the universe's structure. In this way, the dark matter problem is related to the large-scale structure of the universe. The evidence for the existence of dark matter through its gravitational impact is evident in astronomical observations, from the early observations of the large motions of galaxies and clusters and the motions of stars and gas in galaxies, to observations of the large-scale structure in the universe, gravitational lensing, and the cosmic microwave background. The extensive data consistently shows the dominance of dark matter in large-scale structures and quantifies its amount and distribution, assuming general relativity is valid. As the universe continuously expands, more large structures will continue forming, even larger than Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall.